What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here, Delarose.com. That's D E L A R R O Z.com. Marvel is in a spot where they are releasing a ton of Moon Knight content. Uh, and they've we've got the Epic Collections, uh, which is now also has an omnibus covering that material. Uh, they're going to be doing Mark Spector Moon Knight and then a couple other things uh, over the next couple months because they're doing a Disney Plus show. That's what it comes down to. And so they are just spamming the character to the stands. Not a bad business model. This was Brian Bendis' and Alex Maleev's Moon Knight. And they did this about 10 years ago now. Uh, this was kind of their follow-up. Everybody loved them both on Daredevil, and so they they thought, you know what, let's take the other, like, kind of Batman-ish character in Marvel and just do it. So uh, I'll get into this in a second. It is a 12-issue long series, but I'm John Delarose. I am a number one best-selling author, independent comic creator, and I've got a bunch of links in the description below. So if you like my takes on comics, like what I do here in the channel in general, or just want to check out something new, please go to the links in the description below, support the channel, support us, grab some cool independent comics. I totally rely on you guys, so it's my full income. So I appreciate you guys who do so. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Let's get into this. This is a 12-issue series, and it's pretty simple overall. Bendis has a very deconstructed storytelling style. He starts out Moon Knight. It's not actually this. He, this is actually a TV show based on his own life, which he's running. And you kind of see this going here. And you see him talking to these heroes at first. And you think something's kind of weird with all this. Feels kind of weird. Lots of talking scenes because this is Bendis. Whew. Uh, I do like this nice double-page spread. It is beautiful. But... We start to learn that there's something going on. There's a new kingpin of crime out there on the West Coast. At least we get a little bit of action here. That's very unlike Bendis to have this action here. So I'm very happy with that. And uh, things start to go awry. He knows there's something up, and it's bigger than than just him. He gets to this boat and steals this like piece of Ultron, basically. It's like an Ultron head. And this is kind of in that era of... Um, of uh, Age of Ultron and Avengers. And so you'll find out at the end of the issue, he's kind of talking to Wolverine and Spider-Man, Captain America. They're not actually there. He's crazy. Now, I hate this. Uh, <laughs> I hate that, like, the characters have to be crazy and all that. Now, the original Moon Knight had Mark Spector. He, he like, was a master of disguise, and he could play, like, the rich billionaire guy, and he could play, like, the cabbie, and he would use those different personalities as part of his... Um, sort of like way of fighting with Moon Knight. And that was pretty cool. So modern takes of that is that he's actually split personality disorder and it just ruins the hero a little bit. Um, but that was done before Bendis. Like Bendis is just really leaning into that uh, as a thing. Of course he is. And it's it's just kind of annoying. So we end up in this club where there's it's like a strip club basically because it's all dark and edgy. Just a little annoying, but again, we're getting a lot of action. If you look at this, there, there's not a ton of dialogue, and that's very unbendis like And he brings back a character, Echo, from David Mack, uh, who is, uh, was, like, that was, like, in the middle or right before the Bendis run uh, in Daredevil, who's, like, her whole deal is she's deaf, and she's kind of echoing uh, Daredevil's power sets in that she, like, her other senses are enhanced because of that. So pretty cool stuff. You see... You got Count Nefarious as a, as a background guy, um, and then that's about it. So Echo is, like, hiding out with Moon Knight. Uh, Alex Malib, for all of his, like, indie look to her, draws some very attractive ladies. Uh, I definitely was, like, uh, into the whole Echo vibe through this. And Moon Knight's, like, kind of setting up his Hollywood studio, trying to figure out what to do with this whole Age of Ultron head. He hires a guy to kind of help him out. You see, uh, there's a fight with uh, a group of B-listers who are, are coming after um, Moon Knight and Echo here. Some, you know, some pretty good action, actually. A little more than the Daredevil run. Maybe, you know, I feel like, you know, as much as I didn't like the, like, the, like, he's crazy concept being leaned into too much. Like, once I got used to it, I'm like, okay, well, that's what it's going to be. Like, I actually was pretty okay with a lot of the pacing here, which is unlike most Bendis stuff. This was actually a fairly enjoyable read. I do like Alex Maloo's art quite a bit. I mean, you could see that it's just some cool looking uh, stuff throughout all of this. So they're getting closer, Echo and Moon Knight, and uh, they're getting closer to finding out what's going on. Count Nefarious wants that, uh, that Ultron head, and people are kind of realizing he has the Ultron head at this point. And so everybody's kind of closing in. The walls are kind of closing in on him at this juncture. And 
we're about to have an epic confrontation for all of this stuff as it gets bigger. So over the course of this, like one part in here, of course, because they had to go dark and edgy on this, they, they, they sadly like during their relationship. And this is another thing like I don't like about modern storytelling so much is a uh, spoiler. Uh, they kill off Echo. And I know she's not much of a character that like, you know, is, is that ingrained in things, but like she was a nice side character here that like, and she actually made for a nice relationship foil for, uh, for Moon Knight. So I'm kind of sad that they did that because I feel like that was a big mistake. There's Madame Mask. She's part of this, uh, whole, uh, bad thing too. And everybody's out for the Ultron head cause it's kind of going to help them with power. Well, eventually, um, it gets taken care of and... Moon Knight fights Count Nefarious, of course. And it kind of does wrap up pretty good. The actual Avengers show up and deal with it after this whole time. And uh, and then you kind of skip to a three months later sort of deal. And he's out of Hollywood and he's gone. So he's going to show up in the Age of Ultron series, I guess. I never read that before. But that's about it. It was a pretty uh, pretty good story that was like actually had a beginning, middle, and end. It's very unbendous like <laughs> in that level uh lots of action which again is not that bendis like and uh i like the art a ton i could have done without the things i mentioned as it was but this was a fast-paced read and it was a, it was fun overall so i gotta say i enjoy it uh i like most of the moon knight i've read so far so i'll give this an eight out of ten it's a it's a good read and for a complete collection uh it's it's worth the read it's pretty quick all right hit the like and subscribe button we'll be back soon